Hi, and thanks for tuning in to watch this video. This is uh, an above ground storable swimming pool in Monroe, New Jersey. It's July 2021. It's about 90 degrees at 9 a.m. in the morning. Um, what I'll be doing is I'll be running three quarter inch PVC from the main breaker panel inside the house out to the swimming pool equipment, which will include three different circuits. One for the pool pump, the other one for a general purpose convenience receptacle, and the third one will be a 240 volt circuit for the salt water filtration system. Now there are certain, certain rules for swimming pools and one of them is that this trench that I'm digging here needs to be at a minimum 60 inches from the edge of the pool. It also has to be at a minimum 12 inches deep provided that each of the circuits are GFCI protected. If they're not GFCI protected, you need to dig down 18 inches. So in this conduit run, the code says that no more than 360 de total degrees of bends can be in any one conduit run. So to break this up and to meet the code minimum, we'll put in a what's known as a pull box. I believe this one's 8 inches by 8 inches by 4 inches deep. Okay, so <clears throat> that PVC will be going into the bottom of the box. And then pretty soon you'll see another one coming from the house that'll go into the back of the box. And this box is used just to make pulling the conductors through the conduit easier. That's the main purpose of it. So as you can see there, that trench is, at least, is more than 60 inches away from the edge of the pool. That's very important. Um, that's a big part of the swimming pool wiring code. And so, uh, don't forget to do that if you decide to do this for yourself. So here is my new favorite Milwaukee tool. It's the PVC shear. Uh, for years I used a sawzall and before that a hacksaw. Um, but now I'm using this PVC shear. It just makes nice clean cuts. I believe it cuts up to two inches, but I don't think I've tried the two inch yet. Um, but the next service I do, I'm sure I'll be trying that out. <clears throat> So I'm just completing the conduit run first and uh, getting that all set up in place before I pull any wiring. Usually pulling the wiring is like the last thing I do, um, or in the middle I should say, because I got to terminate the receptacles and then do the grounding system here, which we'll get into more. So that PVC heater heats to about 2,000 watts and provides enough heat to bend that three-quarter inch PVC. It's a great tool. So what you'll see here, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get behind that staircase right there so I can come up the other side and attach the rest of the conduit run to get to the main breaker panel. And right in that spot there is where the PVC pull box will be to break up that 306, more than 306 degree bend run. Once I pull that PVC up, uh, thanks to editing videos, I can show you the PVC. Once it comes through, we're going to attach what's known as a um, <clears throat> PVC LB. But before we get to there, here's the pull box. So the conduit on the right-hand side there coming up from underground will go into the bottom of the pull box. And later on, I'm going to uh, install a what's known as an expansion coupling. Uh, just to meet the code, but I didn't have one here today, but I wanted to get this done. And then that other PVC on the left will go into the back of that box. That's my Milwaukee M18 hammer drill, and that's a three-quarter inch carbon Klein hole saw. Fantastic tool for making that hole right there. So I'll attach both sides of the PVC into that box, and the pull box is ready. 
here's that PVC shear again. PVC shear again. Uh, the three quarter inch LB <clears throat> gets attached to that conduit. <clears throat> it's also like a little pulling area as well. Uh, and now over here by where the pool equipment will be, I'm going to dig two holes and place two 10 inch sauna tubes in there um, so I can attach <clears throat> two 4x4 four four posts inside the sauna tubes with concrete uh, so I have a place to mount my electrical equipment. More on that in a few. So there you can see I got both holes that are dug and I'll put the sauna tube in there and get a dry measurement. Obviously you can see I've cut them there already. So I'm mixing the concrete by hand. I think it's a 60 or an 80 pound bag of concrete. Just with water you mix it. Get a nice mix of peanut butter. Backfill inside the sauna tube. Let that cure for um, attaching the cross pieces to both of the posts. Make sure the lumber is plumb and level and let that cure. Uh, on this particular job, um, they knew that my company was busy and that I wouldn't be back for a couple of weeks after starting this job today. They were okay with that, so we started, get up to this point, um, let those cure. But what I'm working on here now is the uh, equip potential bonding grid. So this is required for all swimming pools. Uh, and what this is, is a bare copper wire that <clears throat> Uh, covers the circumference of the entire pool. What it does is it's supposed to eliminate um, voltage gradients around the pool. So what you want to do is you want to run this bare wire and attach it to four different points around the pool. If you were looking at a clock, you would like to attach, make these attachments at 10 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 4 o'clock, and 8 o'clock. The other thing you need to do is you need to attach <clears throat> a, a metal plate inside the skimmer so do you mechanically bond or mechanically ground the water in the swimming pool so these split bolt connectors are what makes the connection to the four points in the pool uh, that need to be bonded to the system to the equip potential bonding grid here each one of these grounding lugs need to be uh, direct burial rated which is important so they don't deteriorate over time. Chlorine eats through a lot of materials, but if they're rated for direct burial, they're acceptable by the code, and the job will last a long time. Uh, here, I'm just hiding that bare wire behind the frame of the pool here, just to make it look as neat as possible. I think I was a little bit short on this wire, but this wire, this bare number 8 aug copper wire, is going to go right to that skimmer there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a metal plate later on in this video, <clears throat> which will mechanically bond the water itself. So I'll take out the <clears throat> netting there basket rather and this metal plate I'll just get a dry fit make sure it's in there you got to make sure that this plate is in contact with the water at all times so you got to put this at the bottom of the skimmer very important so I'm just getting a dry fit right there probably not necessary to do that and I'm using a 3 16 drill bit to make this hole so now watch the waters are gonna come right out which is okay because you're gonna put this plate in in a second here with the with the uh, o-ring on the inside and it's going to plug up that hole, and I'll watch the water just stop once that stem comes out. <clears throat> and once that stem comes out, you're going to put a washer, and then a lock washer, and then a nut to make that nice and tight so it doesn't leak. After that, you're going to put on the ground lug, and then another washer, another lock washer, and another nut to tighten that up. Then we're going to take that bare number eight wire you see there hanging and attach it to that lug. And that will mechanically ground that swimming pool water. That's what they're talking about when they're 
talking about the equipotential bonding grid and the five points of grounding swimming pool. This product is made by a company called Burndy. Um, it's the only one I've ever seen, I've ever used. Uh, most of the supply houses here in New Jersey, that's what they have. Um, so again, the directions say drill a 3 16 hole. You don't want to do any smaller or any bigger or that, that post will not fit. And now you're going to have a hole in the guy's skimmer. So make sure you have a 3 16 inch bit before you drill any holes. If you like this video, give it a like, and if you want to see more content like this in the future, you can subscribe. Just make sure when you're tightening this up that it's, it's tight. I know I could have used a nut driver here, didn't have one in my pocket at the time, and I tightened it with my lineman pliers. And I'm sure I'm not the only one that does this. So you can do a better way. You can do it better, uh, but this is fine. And there are attached number eight copper wire. And that swimming pool wire is almost bonded to the system. This whole equipotential bonding grid, what it does is it, it, it covers the circumference of the pool and it goes back to the pool filter motor. And on the bottom of that motor is a lug. See that copper lug right at the bottom where it says on off right to the bottom there? We're going to attach the end of that wire to this spot right here. And this meets the National Electric Code requirements for the equipotential bonding grid installation of a storable swimming pool. Alright, so I'm over here by the main breaker panel, which is on the other side of this wall in the basement. You can see the meter underground service right to the right right there. Uh, so what I've done is I've run three circuits um, <clears throat> that'll attach the circuit breakers, GFCI circuit breakers in the main breaker panel. And <clears throat> that PVC conduit that I've been running is going to terminate inside this box. And we're going to join the THHN THWN wires that'll be wiring through the conduit, they'll be spliced to these home runs inside this two gang weatherproof box. Now I know you wouldn't run PVC conduit without a level. You want to make sure that's nice and neat. You might have a little pitch so it's arranged to drain, uh, but I did not see that as an issue here. Nice and clean. Take your time. Make a nice PVC run. There's an expansion coupling right there. That makes connecting these two pieces of conduit very easy. It's also required uh, by the National Electric Code, those PVC expansion couplings. I understand it costs maybe about $20 and you got to use like three or four of them on this job. Trust me, it makes doing this work easier and it's required. Mm -hmm. So here I have a, um, a two-foot wiring trough that I'm going to bring my main conductors into and then distribute them to each of the three receptacles and the timer box. So the 24-hour time clock controls the pool pump and tells the pool pump to come on and off uh, at certain times. It's the energy code requirement that you have a 24-hour time clock or be able to turn that timer off. Otherwise, people will be using that all day long and... Um, like I said, that's an energy code requirement. So here I'm just prefabbing the trough 
with my receptacle boxes. I'm going to make a whole assembly before attaching it um, <clears throat> to where the pool equipment is going to go on the lumber that I'm going to install shortly here too. It's a lot easier working on my table here than working over by where it's going to be because I can stand up and get my measurements just right and attach everything uh, before setting it in place. So here are the cross pieces I'll be using to attach to the two 4x4s that I installed previously. And um, this is just 3 quarter inch uh, by 5 or 6. And we'll pre-drill some holes and attach it to those 4x4s and then mount the equipment to that. course you wouldn't mount any equipment like this without it being level but I'm having a hard time here with the screws because I'm using stainless steel around the swimming pool the chlorine you know I see guys using sheetrock screws sometimes I, I don't get it so I, I go I try to go above and beyond what's required and with the stainless steels you don't have to worry about them rusting but you can't also also you can't magnetize them so if you can't magnetize them they fall off your drill bit so that's what I'm struggling with there but once you get a couple of them in there it makes things easier <clears throat> As you can see, it was pretty damn hot that day, like 90 degrees or so, the humidity. Boy, it was a hot day. Um, but a lot of times I'll put on a shirt and I'll just leave the shirt on all day and sweat right through it. Um, I'm not sure <laughs> what happened to the shirt after that because it's dirty, sweaty, probably stains in it now. What are you going to do? And it's a little bit, a little bit too big for me too, as you can see. <laughs> All right, so here, what I think, what I'm doing here is I'm making that trench a little deeper. It might have rained while I was gone, and I might not have had to require depth for that PVC. So I'm digging it out. And then I'm going to install a uh, expansion coupling to go into the bottom of that trough right there. It's pretty important to get the depth. Um, you'd hate to do all this work and then have the inspector tell you that you're not deep enough right there and make the adjustments then. So just do it right the first time. That's what I always say. Those PVC shears, I love them. So I just need to make, make a cut, uh, get the expansion coupling in place, and then figure out the piece coming out of the top of the expansion coupling and into the bottom of the trough. I don't know if you're interested, but I'm making this movie, uh, I'm sorry, I'm making this video using iMovie. Um, I'm not sure which version I have, but I've learned a few tricks, and um, I enjoy my Mac computer very much. So, I highly uh, suggest you use <clears throat> iMovie. See, we'll just get a dry fit into that <clears throat> male adapter, and now there we go. And now I can lower it as I need fit, as I need be, and I have the depth of the PVC at the right depth for inspection. All right, so now I'm figuring out 
which wires I need to run. So here I'm going to be running two 120 volt 20 amp circuits and I'm going to be running one 240 volt 20 amp circuit. So all these circuits are going to be grounded. When you're running multiple circuits in one PVC run, the largest circuit is how you size the green equipment grounding conductor. So even though I'm running three circuits, I only need to run one equipment grounding conductor with this wiring. The most important thing here is that you don't <clears throat> confuse which white neutral wire goes with which circuit. So I got a hot black and I got a hot orange, okay? But I got two separate neutrals, so I don't know which one is which, They're the same color. Uh, so a lot of times I'll either mark it or I'll just test it. I'll do a little continuity test later and pair them up the correct way. Um, that's what I did here. And when I installed my circuit breakers, everything worked the first time. So do it right the first time. I can't stress that enough. Just take your time and do it right. This is probably my favorite part of the job because I'm just standing up and I'm not digging and I'm not down in the dirt working or playing around with the equipment potential bonding grid system. Love it. So I'm just cutting this. I'm using half inch EMT for the reels and I'll set them up on this uh, Racketeers um, <clears throat> tool that I have to set up the uh, THHN runs. And that's the Milwaukee Nylon Snake, which is perfect for using, uh, for pulling wire. It's easy on the hands too, it doesn't hurt when you pull, instead of having that steel snake. So I had some kind of problem here with these, with the, uh, with this condo, and now I'm fixing it. I don't know if I had the depth or what the story was, it just wasn't long enough. Something wasn't right, so I gotta fix it. Uh, so here I go. So even though I'm running seven different conductors here, uh, I did not need any lube. Lube was not required. So after the conductors were pulled, I don't know what happened to the footage there. Uh, so this is back by the panel here where the home runs join THHN. And we'll make a quick splice. We'll tie all of our grounds together. And we'll figure out which neutrals go with which circuit. And we'll make our final uh, terminations. Here we are with the pull box. And we'll do the same thing. All the grounds go together. Both those blues go together for the 240 volt circuit. And then make sure you have the correct uh, neutrals and you have the right hot conductors. <clears throat> so there's plenty of room in that junction box right there. I just, that was the size I got just to be on the safe side. So anytime you have that amount of conductors in a box, it's gotta be sized correctly. It's all number 12 wires. And um, so the cubic fill is important uh, in doing electrical work. All right, so back here at the trough, you see I've got wiring coming into the trough and then into the in three individual boxes. That box right there, that's going to be my 240 volt saltwater filtration receptacle. That's a NEMA 620. Not exactly sure of the number, but two hots in the ground, no neutral for this. <clears throat> So if you ask me, being an electrician, the most important thing is how you terminate conductors. So right here, this is pivotal. So if you don't do it right, <clears throat> uh, you make a loose connection, loose terminal device, whatever the case might be. If you don't terminate correctly, uh, it, it generates a lot of heat depending on the size of the electrical load. So the more heat 
on a circuit, the more load on a circuit, the more heat will be generated if your if your your termination isn't done correctly. So very very important to terminate your conductors right. Um, <clears throat> this is for the uh, pool filter. This is also a twist lock connector, I should say. So what that means is it won't be able to vibrate out of position. When you go to push the male cord body into this receptacle, you'll turn it to the right and it'll lock in position. Uh, I'm not sure if it's required anymore for the swimming pools, but I'm in such a habit of doing that, so I just keep doing it. It's a better install anyway, safer. Uh, the 24 hour time clock, there's the neutral conductor being terminated. Very important, get a nice tight connection there. Get your torque just right. <clears throat> Make sure that doesn't come undone. Uh, that orange conductor is the one circuit, that's the line side of the time clock. And then pretty soon you'll see the black wire that'll be going to the receptacle. That'll be the load side of the time clock. So <clears throat> when you set the time clock later on, it'll turn on at your designated time and turn off at another designated time. And it'll do that 24 hours a day, seven days a week. All right, so like a, this is the general purpose receptacle for service that's required. This is on a separate 20 amp circuit, and I'm just putting in a regular duplex receptacle because the circuit breaker will be a GFCI. In fact, all of these receptacles, all this wiring out here, all the wiring in the conduit, buried 12 inches below, all GFCI protected via circuit breakers inside the main breaker panel. And again, that middle receptacle, that's just for servicing. So if somebody comes to work on something, they have a place to plug in. That's all it's there for. Cannot be on the same circuit as the pool filter. That's important that you know that. Now here I'm using a bubble cover. This is required also. And uh, eventually I'll get around to putting the cord bodies on the equipment, <clears throat> uh, the locking devices. Now here I should have gotten a deep bubble cover like the one on the left for the pool pump. So I might have to go back and change that before the inspection or meet the inspector or wait for the inspector to call me out on it. But I probably should go back and do it. I think it fit in there, no problem. Uh, but I like to use the, the, the deeper ones, just a better job. Do it right the first time, right? I've said that before. Uh, so very important here. This trough is metal, conduct electricity, and the code says if it can become energized, you have to bond it to the system, to the grounding system. So I'm using some stainless steel equipment here. I'm putting this lug inside the trough, <clears throat> and I'll attach a nut and bolt as required by the code so that this metal wiring trough is grounded to the system. I probably should have done this at the, at the assembly on the table, uh, just an oversight, so that's why I'm doing it here. It's definitely not easier doing it here, that's for sure. So you get a good connection. I'm a big fan of labeling everything. Just put a label on there. What is it? You never know who's going to be back there to fix it if it's not me. But if it is me, I'll know exactly what's going on. I'll be reminded right away.
And of course, the main thing in my business is word of mouth, referrals. So I have a lot of repeat business. I have a lot of referrals. And uh, I'm very proud of that. So I don't have to spend too much money advertising my business. A lot of the work speaks for itself. And obviously, there's not enough electricians to go around. So I appreciate the repeat customers and the referrals. Thank you. Yeah, see, that core body fits right in there. I guess it's a little stress on the wire there. I don't think that salt water filtration system uh, draws a lot of power. I, I was surprised it was 240 volts, to be honest with you. I had to scramble around to get the GFCI breaker for that, a double pull breaker. It wasn't really readily available anywhere. You don't even want to know what I had to pay for it, but I got it. And uh, it's a safe installation because of it. All right, so this is for the 120 volt pool pump, uh, the core body here. Again, make sure those terminations are just right. It's not that hard. Take your time, do it right, get a nice connection. And pull on it. You always want to, when you're done, you want to pull on it, make sure it doesn't come out. Because if it's loose, it's going to start arcing, and then it's not going to work one day. And it might not even. It might not even overload the circuit breaker because the circuit breaker doesn't see any problem. It's just a bad connection. So circuit breaker is only going to trip <clears throat> if it's an overload, short circuit, or a ground fault. Loose connection, it's not going to trip the breaker, but it'll stop working because of it. So do it right the first time, right? All right, so here's my final labels. All the circuit breakers have been on, and the power, you see the pool filter in the background going. So we've energized the circuits, everything's up and running. So we're going to get some final labels here on top, of this, on top of the boxes, as required by the code. And this is circuit number 28, pool filter. Like to take this time to say thanks for watching this video. Make sure you like it, hit subscribe if you want to see more content. Thanks for watching.